Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the Kenny Mock Show, and I'm I'm so excited for our guest today. And but I, before I begin to to introduce him, I wanted to remind all of you about um, when you donate uh, to Life Care. We serve our veterans and seniors and young people who've had tragic uh, episodes where they're they're handicapped. And the books are being being uh, when you send a donation. This is a great Christmas gift, and um, it's all about your legacy. You know, inspiring. If you want to give something that really matters about their life, it's about, you know, what what am I giving? And I found out the most important thing I give to my children and my family is my story. And we all have a story, and we we sometimes minimize the story. We shouldn't, but it's a great book. Um, and Don's in this book, and his his. Uh, his mentoring of my life, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. And um, also, here's a cup. And so, donate uh, to these things. And you know, it's a great, it's a great thing to for camping, or you know, for hiking. If you can, you know, it's got that little uh, <clears throat> lever there. You can put uh, attach it to your belt. So your gifts go to a good cause, and you get to use a good product out of, out of these two things by just donating. So thank you. So. Without further ado, let me introduce um, a true friend, and more important, like a father figure to me, um, probably over 50 years now <laughs> time's been in my life, and um, it, it's, his life has been a gift to me, and it's called, um, that's why I'm, I'm calling this the gift of mentoring. You know, whether you're mentoring somebody or, or they're mentoring you, um, it has an impression on your life, both positively or negatively, and, and in my case... It's been one of the most positive aspects of my life is to, to have uh, been allowed to uh, have a dear friend of my father's become like a second father to me, and that's Don Evans. So, Don, welcome. We're honored to have you this morning. Thank you, Kenny. Yeah. Nice very, being here. Merry Christmas yeah. to all of you, by the way. And uh, I can't think of a better way to start off Christmas than to talk about the importance of, of the gift of, of, of mentoring and the gifts of life and uh, the people in our life. And so... Don, you uh, you've had two uh, amazing parents, and then you've had some people made impressions on your life too. And I thought maybe you could share a little bit of who these folks are and how how impressionable it it meant to your to your life. Well, first of all, <clears throat> thank you for having me, Kenny. It's been a pleasure to be here. Um, you asked me the question of the importance of mentorship. I think maybe. Before I share their influence on my life, I'd like to just explain that I feel mentorship. Mentoring is basically giving advice or training. But I'm going to focus a lot of my discussion on youth, on children. And uh, that's where I come from as a teacher, coach, and and uh, school principal. But... <clears throat> Mentoring to me is the empowering young people for a positive change in their life by developing good values. Mm -hmm. So really, in a nutshell, it's basically helping young people to get on the right track in life. Um, I'll go into greater detail maybe if, uh, in, a, in a few minutes about that. Sure. But uh, to answer your, your question regarding... The uh, influential people in my life, I gave that some thought uh, without reservation. My mother was the most influential person in my life, um, spiritually and uh, throughout my life. Uh, she was, um, she lost her mother when she was three years old. Her aunt, her aunt raised her. Mm. And, um, her gift was uh, just being a, a real dedicated Christian. When I walked through the house, uh, when I came into the house, if she was in the kitchen uh, cooking, she'd be humming a, a hymn or in the bedroom praying or in the front room reading her Bible. So that was, that was how I grew up. I saw that on a daily basis. Did it affect me? Absolutely. I thank God for my heritage. Mm -hmm. So without reservation, obviously my mother was the most influential person in my life. 
I thought about someone who might have been a, a factor in my decision for my career, my vocation, and that would be my high school coach. Um, he had signs in the locker room, positive signs of, of trying to make you feel better about yourself. And if anything he did, uh, he could take just an average player, be it football, basketball, or track, which I participated in. And by the time you got done talking to him and him uh, getting you involved and getting you ready to do your, uh, to do your sport, you felt nobody could beat you. <laughs> and I take that and I, I thought, you know, I really want to use that in my life. And it led me into education. And I've uh, pretty much all my life, I really wanted to help kids, to help children, and to help youth. And so it led me into my career. Mm. Those two people, more importantly, my mother, uh, had some great influence on my life. Wow. That's great. So, yeah, let's, let's talk a little bit about <clears throat> your, your, uh, your life as a teacher, as a principal. I know you've told me some great stories. And just, <laughs> um, you know, after so many years, Don, how long were you uh, uh, in, in the Beecher School well, District? Well, I um, I was for in the same district. I didn't I didn't uh, move. I, I finished. I started my career and I terminated ended my career at Beecher Schools outside of Flint, and uh, pretty much that was the entire essence of my career. Um, How many years were you there? Thirty seven years. Thirty seven. Yeah. Wow. Uh, believe it or not, it took an early retirement, <laughs> but uh, Bob. Barbara lost her job, or they outsourced her job as an office uh, person. She worked in the office in the motors, and we decided to come to, to Nashville where one of our daughters lived, yeah. and we took an early retirement. So uh, I did leave my, uh, my job a little early in life. But talking about <clears throat> my experience in, in uh, dealing with my, uh, my uh, experience in education, um, I started teaching in 1961, and uh, the 60s, the whole decade, was just filled with civil unrest. Um, you saw where in that decade we had the Vietnam War, we had the assassination of our President Kennedy, we had the assassination of Martin Luther King, of Martin Luther King who led the civil rights movement and all of his efforts to do, to do this in a peaceful way. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of all of that, when, it, when all those things occurring, how that affected kids coming to school, trust me, it had a major effect on how we had to deal with kids in school mm -hmm. because they brought a lot of those unrestful feelings yeah. to school. Just so we, we're no, we're, we know this, Don... Don was principal and teacher at, a, at a, an inner city school, and basically in, in a lot of ways. Beecher was a low socioeconomic community. Um, in Flint, Michigan. In Flint, Michigan, just, just outside the city limits. And um, in dealing with, with, those, with those families, with those situations, uh, I could write a book. Yeah. But I want to say this. In 1961, I started teaching. And when you started the day, the tardy bell would ring. And in those days, Tennessee Ernie Ford, who was a very, very popular singer at the time, would come on the PA with a hymn. That's how we started school. Wow. Um, we had scripture readings, believe it or not. We had every class stand and read face the flag and give a pledge of allegiance to the flag. And then we had the announcements. That's how we started school in 1961. Mm. Just a short time, within two years, Madeline O'Hara came on the scene. And she, being an atheist, and had a son who was in public schools, and she did not want him involved with religion in any shape or form, filed a civil suit, it went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and we know that uh, the Supreme Court made a, a decision 
that affected schools in a great way. They banned the mandated uh, use of prayer in schools. At that time, I had the largest Youth of Christ uh, group in the whole county. We met once a week after school. Mm. I would bring in ministers and people like yourself who were, who I thought could give a good values to them, and and we we had a large group that met, and the kids loved it. And it seemed that after all of that happened, with that Supreme Court decision, things became. You know, you didn't see hardly any of that. How did that affect school? In my 37 years, I saw the discipline of being affected tremendously. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we looked at education in those days, um, you have to look at that particular setting which I was experiencing. Like I mentioned, a low socioeconomic community. of the children that I had, the youth that I faced every day in the classroom and in my school, were from broken homes. Mm -hmm. Single parent families. Nine out of every ten children that walked through that door, I knew, did not have a father in that home. Wow. How did that affect that kid in school? Mm -hmm. Tremendously. I could tell you story after story of Pretty little girls, 7th, 8th, and ninth grade, their personalities changing and getting hold of the home counselor, counseling those children and finding out that their father had molested them and uh, how they wanted to end their lives. And I could go on and on regarding that. Mm-hmm. But you asked me to share a story. Well, <clears throat> I could share many, Kenny, but the story that comes to my mind that's most vivid in my memory probably half and 40 some odd years ago, was Sylvester. Sylvester was five years old, just a kindergartner. And uh, <clears throat> his teacher was a master teacher. She came down one day apologizing, having Sylvester in the office with her and saying, Mr. Evans, you're going to have to talk to Sylvester. I, he's unruly. I can't do anything with him in class. He's so disruptive. I said, go back to your room. I'll... I'll take, I'll take care of it. So I walked around my desk, and I sat down next to, next to Sylvester and face-to-face, face and I said, uh, Sylvester, what, why are you acting this way? Why are you so unruly in class and not being a, paying attention? And his little head went down, and he, he said, Mr. Evans, I don't know why I'm acting this way. Well, I gave him my 50-cent speech. And uh, encouraged him to do better and took him back to class. It was just a few days later after the morning tardy bell rang. I gave my announcements. And I would walk around the school and the hallways and just make sure everything's in order. And outside the kindergarten classroom was Sylvester standing there with his jacket still on. And I walked up to him. I said, Sylvester, why, why aren't you in class? And his head was down. And he finally looked up with a forlorn look and said, and I'll never forget this. He said, Mr. Evans, will you give me a hug? I knelt down and put my arms around the boy. And I hugged him and I told him I loved him. And we embraced for a long time and I put him in his room. After that situation, when I saw Sylvester, he had a smile on his face. He would say, hi, Mr. Evans. Never had another problem. I say that to say this, that there are so many Sylvesters that were out there, didn't have love, didn't have affection in the home. And so the only time they would get it maybe would be in school. I had a meeting with the superintendent. He called all the principals up to the office, up to the administrative conference room, and he We walked in, we could tell he was a little upset. He said, I called you up here because I just had an irate parent on the phone. And she was upset because the teacher touched her child, put his arm around her child, and she didn't want her child touched by a teacher. And I want you to tell your teachers, don't touch those children. 
I had to raise my hand. And I said, Mr. Rutherford, I said, with due respect, I can't do that. I said, I can't walk down the hall without having my arm around a kid, trying to encourage them, ask them how their day was, how's things going, letting them know that we, we care about them. And uh, I said, it, it would be very difficult for me to tell my staff that they can't touch children. Touching is so important. I realize today kids are misused and abused, and in, in, even in education, some teachers take advantage of that situation. Yeah. However, he looked at the principals that day, and he said, forget what I said. Go back to your, to your <laughs> buildings. So, um, yes, having, having that relationship with kids because they need our love and compassion. Yeah. It's um, affirmation is what you're talking about, right? Absolutely. You know, affirming uh, someone who has never maybe been affirmed. Mm -hmm. It's pretty powerful, Don. Um, so, <laughs> so that really changed your life, that particular uh, child. And, you know, you were, you were a coach. You know, you influenced... Uh, Folks and uh, you know young people and into the, but um, it sounds like you always whether you were coaching or teaching or principal, you were always encouraging your teachers uh, and those who you worked with to um, to affirm kids. Absolutely, and, I... and, and that's a that's a a mentor mm -hmm. can be a teacher or a principal yeah. or and, or you can be a mom or a dad or whatever. To other kids in your neighborhood, right? Right, yeah. right. I just saw a few days ago where uh, the, the court case uh, reversed a decision by a coach who prayed with, her, with his team. And he lost his job over it. Well, he got his job back because the courts said that that was uh, not unconstitutional. Yeah. As a coach, for years, I, I started the, the game with her, took their helmets off, and they prayed. Or before basketball, they, they prayed. And I, I did this unashamedly. And I, and I felt that that was something that I wanted them to understand that this was a part of what we're all about. Sure. You know, one more thing about my experience in education and how important compassion and love for kids when they come to school because they, many cases do not receive that at home. I remember uh, the, uh, the students being interviewed by a person who wanted to know about what teacher was the most important one that uh, left an impression on them. And every one of them was referring back to a Mrs. Cole who taught them in elementary school. And uh, so he thought, well, this person must be something else. So he made an appointment to go see this teacher. And when he talked with her, he said, you know, I've, I've interviewed a number of students and every one of them referred to you as the, the most influential person that they had in school. Mm -hmm. What was it? What was it about you that, uh, that made a difference? And she looked, she looked away and she said, you know, I love those kids. He said, that's my answer. Mm -hmm. So... When kids see that we care, yeah, it makes a difference. Yeah. Well, you have definitely um, been a a teacher and a counselor in my own life. Uh, I've served as a teacher and a counselor in my career, and um, been involved in helping children most of my life, and with uh, adults. Mm -hmm. And you know, you had a great influence on my life, and I Absolutely. didn't often realize it. Um, how impactful your life has been on mine. My, my father was in, the, um, in a business, and he didn't get to see a lot of my track meets, but, um, or my mom, because they were busy, you know, they had a small business. Right. But I always enjoyed, um, like, you know, I always enjoyed when you were, uh, when I was around you, because you did always ask about my life, and, you know, influenced me that way, and, I know when uh, when I got that uh, 
you know, I, I was fortunate enough, I'm, I'm, and I humbly say this, that, you know, God gave me the gift of running, and I was able to, to break a school record. And uh, I, I know one of the things that, that I really appreciated about your life is that you showed me the importance of, of, uh, of competition, but, but to do it with uh, honor and dignity, and I appreciate that. And so uh, that was uh, an impressionable part of my life is that I realized I could be a leader for the first time I became captain of, of the track team. And I realized that, uh, you know, you were a big influence on my life, and I didn't realize it until later on in life how, yeah. how impressionable you, you have been in my life in that area. Um, uh, you know, the other thing about you that <laughs> I love is um, when we would go golfing, uh, you you showed to me uh, also a great joy and sense of humor. You would, uh, I would approach a ball. I know you'd be up in front of me. You'd, you'd like to hit and you'd get going. And my ball may have been, you know, a little bit behind uh, yours. Still is probably sometimes. <laughs> and and uh, so um, I would go to approach, address my ball, and it would be about an inch underneath the ground. You know, with just the, the just, just a little bit of white <laughs> it, was, it was a muddy day, and I thought, that's my that's my mentor, my friend, yeah. and my like the guy that that shows me that you should have joy and humor, and yeah. <laughs> and so I, I'll never forget that. And you to to this day, you're that same person. I, I love that yeah. that you love competition, but you love the joy of the camaraderie right. of your friends, right. your family, and uh, so. You know, thank you for that gift. Um, we're going to close out on this this first segment here in just a minute. But I um, I know that uh, for me, uh, being in church work, you you were not only uh, a leader as a principal, you also were a leader in the aspect that you would show uh, your faithfulness in the choir. You would sing. You had a great voice. You still do, and. Um, you know, that, that meant a lot to me, watching you be so faithful. I mean, I can't remember a time when we'd have a practice. You yeah. weren't there singing all those cantatas, you know, um, and um, went on to, to lead even the choir there, you know, when, when my father and I had, had gone. And um, you just, I, I was just really want to thank you for, no matter what, you were always a servant first and a servant leader is important. Can you can you address that a little bit? The importance of servant leadership versus, you know, coming in and changing everything without really, um, I don't know what what the word is, but it's 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 like you you would get the buy-in first. Yeah. You know? Well, first of all, Kenny, um, <clears throat> I don't know the timeline here, but when it comes to your family, before I try to answer that, um, like you said, we the Mock family and the Evans family, we go back. Some on 50, some on years. Yeah. Your mother and dad, when they moved to Michigan, uh, were the dearest friends we had. <clears throat> we took vacations together as families. Mm -hmm. your, you and Ray Ann, your wife, and my daughter, uh, they, you take vacations. Our, our, your grandchildren, your daughter, <laughs> my granddaughter, were in each other's weddings. So we go back two or three generations. Yeah. So that's very, very important to me and to you. And yes, uh, Barbara, my wife, always has this famous saying. She says, always make new friends, but remember the old, <laughs> yeah. old friends. New friends are like silver, but old friends are like gold. Mm. The Moth family is like gold. Yeah. And um, regarding um, being a, a servant or, you know, in the, in the church, setting um, I was a teacher uh, I served on the church board at times I did do a little bit of choir work and um, and yes we did sing so but you know you don't necessarily have to be out in the limelight um, necessarily uh, you want to encourage others to experience that too yeah and um, I feel that that's, that's so important. I don't know uh, if I'm trying to answer your question, the last question, uh, but I feel that uh, just, just trying to be faithful in anything you do, yeah. um, I think it's so very important. 
And um, I feel that if you have that faithfulness, that answers a lot of questions in, in, in helping people. Let me just close this session out by saying um, the name of the book is Leaving Your Life Imprint. And if there's one person who's left a, a significant imprint on my life, it's Don Evans. And not just me, but on so many people. And I want to encourage you to get this book because I, I want you to think about your life. I've, I've Don, I've, I've, I've unfortunately done done funerals and and. Unfortunately, that's the time when, when sometimes a family will talk about someone's life story and kind of right. like, and I, and I, there's a part of me that cringes because I think, why, why didn't I know about the rest of this gentleman's, uh, our lady's story? And I could have, you know, I could have experienced, um, uh, the joy of, of understanding story and, and, uh, it gives you significance when you understand your story. It gives you meaning. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we live in a world where people, you know, they sometimes, they th they're trying to find significance in, in whether it's, yeah, yeah, I love the internet in some ways, but sometimes I hate it because it, it moves people away from relationships if you're not careful and if you don't properly use the internet properly. Um, it wasn't meant to be your all, uh, everything. And I, I'm a little concerned about um, this day of age that the people don't value the importance of relationships and understanding their history, their redemptive story. And so I want to encourage you to get the book. It, it's not for selfish reasons. It's unselfish reasons. It, it helps people. Number one, we're continuing to help. We help hundreds and thousands of people uh, throughout my career that, that, that need a love and attention and care that nobody else can give them. Uh, and so but here's an influencer on my life. Here's an imprint, uh, an imprint on my life, and it's from Don and from other people in my life. And so I want to encourage you to, to if you really want to give something special to somebody, give them their story. How to, how to, you know, a lot of people say, I don't even know where to begin. Well, this will help you and encourage you to kind of get started. And, um, and I can't think of a better, a better gift, not just because I wrote it, but because underneath the story is to inspire you to find out your own story and uh, realize that God has a special, you know, he says, he says in his word, you are awesome and wonderfully made. I remember mm. my daughter telling me that after a Sunday school a lesson one time. She said, Dad, I got to learn a new scripture. And I'm awesome and wonderfully made. And I thought, wow, what a, what a precious impression church has made to my daughter. And she's realized that God made everybody's story special. So I'll just close on that and just say uh, it's been a blessing uh, to be with you today and, and, and Booker's continuing to put things out there about where you can get our materials. If you want to volunteer, you want to uh, just give uh, something for, for something special. But I, I, I think you can, uh, after this is over, we'll, we'll, you can get us on YouTube and you can donate um, you know, any, any way, way you want to. I, I mean, we've even got a Venmo now under my name and those, those proceeds go to help our ministry. So God bless you. Thank you for your time. Um, I hope you have a great Christmas. Now, Don's got, we got another session with Don coming up next week. You'll hear that one. And uh, believe me, you won't want to miss that one either. So God bless. Have a good day. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching the show. If you guys have any questions or if you would like to donate and receive the book, please head on over to kennymuck.org slash show. Here you can ask us any questions that you might have as well as make a donation. Thank you so much for watching.